Hey everyone, this is Sean from Project Nautilus Cosplay, and today I'll be going over a quick history on kaiju suit making and the essential steps on building your very own Godzilla or kaiju suit. First off, what are kaiju anyway? The term kaiju means strange beast in Japan, and they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, from the iconic movie stars Godzilla, Gamera, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, to the diverse and bizarre monsters and alien invaders from the Ultraman series. The first official kaiju suit comes from the original Godzilla in 1954. The titular monster was created by a sculptor Teizo Toshimitsu, Eizo Kamai, and the Yagi brothers. After a failed prototype, countless trial and error, and large amounts of urethane foam, bamboo, cotton, and liquid plastic rubber, they were able to build a 2 meter or 6 foot behemoth that weighed over 150 kilograms or 200 pounds. With that many layers inside, the suit was so heavy that suit actor Haruo Nakajima could only last no more than 3 minutes between takes, frequently suffering heat exhaustion and leaving pools of sweat inside. Over the years, these Godzilla and Kaiju suits would improve in the use of lightweight materials, modernized techniques, and flexibility. All thanks to the hard work of artists like Tonarita and Ryosaku Takayama, who made highly creative and lightweight monster suits, easing performance for ultra kaiju actors, and the works of Keizo Murase and Nobuyuki Yasumaru, bringing new innovative techniques to the table in order to create lifelike suits for the big Japanese screen. These would go on to inspire monster suit makers Shinichi Wakasa, Fuyuki Shinara, and many more to pass on the legacy of building magnificent beasts to trample highly detailed model cities and battle with each other. You know what? You can too. I will be going over some essential steps to creating a kaiju suit in the style of classic Toho and Tsuburaya productions. These steps consist of planning, patterning, foam fabrication, and latex coating. If you have prior knowledge or experience with sculpting and mold making, you can definitely apply those steps to the build. Since I currently am building a new Godzilla suit and have very limited space, I will be focusing more on a single section in order to demonstrate the process. Fortunately, I have spare materials to work with. First off, pick a kaiju you want to work on. There are so many choices. Each comes with their own set of challenges, so there is never a right or wrong choice. That being said, Toho suits like Godzilla are known to be more detailed but heavy and hard to move inside, while Subaraya production suits are lightweight and flexible though lack in realism. While researching, make sure you gather reference. Lots of reference. Photo books are great in capturing details and offer an inside look behind the building of your choice. I definitely recommend checking out the Godzilla graphic collection, a compilation that makes every incarnation accessible in a single book. For the Super Complete Work series, which demonstrate some nice orthographic views of the film suits. If you can't afford these books, you can also visit becominggodzilla.com and its large catalog of Godzilla movie suit history and cosplayers for a wide variety of references and inspirations. Video clips provide a good look on how the kaiju should move and feel, so I recommend getting some footage off media platforms or home video. Action figures, vinyl toys, and models are perfect references for proportions and dimension and will ultimately be an important tool for the method that we'll be using in this tutorial. So what are the main ingredients to building a tokusatsu style kaiju suit? The essential materials are polyurethane or cushion foam for the main structure and details of the suit. Urethane foam comes in a variety of thicknesses. In large quantities, it can be quite economical Depending on the thickness, they provide both support and adequate flexibility. This foam is easily cuttable, carvable, and can be adhered together with contact cement, or special spray adhesive like Foam Fast 74. Stretch fabric, like nylon or spandex, provide a nice lining between you and the foam material to reduce friction and improve comfort. Stretch fabric can be used to add flexibility to certain areas of articulation. By leaving a gap in the joints and connecting it with the fabric, it can also be used to relieve tension on areas that may create stress for the foam, such as areas with velcro lining or zippers. Liquid latex is the skin that binds the entire suit together, 
used in Halloween masks, prosthetics, and certain creature suits, liquid latex air dries into a flexible rubber. They come in different colors, but I like to use the default flesh color and add acrylic paint of my choosing afterwards. It can be applied using a chip brush or spare foam pieces. Poured if using a stone mold or sprayed with a, well, a spray gun. Cotton is an optional method to adding padding and support to the suit. When adding latex, you can combine cotton with it to create a malleable surface for extra details. Patching repairs or binding different parts of the suit together. You can find these materials at your local tapestry or a mattress shop, while the liquid latex would depend greatly on your location. I personally had to order my Monster Maker's liquid latex on Amazon. So with all these materials in hand, how do I even approach building this kaiju, you ask? Well, you have two options, muscle suit fabrication or patterning. A muscle suit is taking thick slabs of foam and carving them to individual muscle parts that, when glued to a spandex undersuit, will create a footed base structure for all the details to go on. The downside is all that foam volume creates more weight and may also be hotter inside. The patterning method is as the name suggests, creating a pattern based on an initial prototype sculpture or figure and transferring it to the foam. This creates a lightweight suit that maintains the original proportions of your source material. The catch is that you would need to create a support structure to hold the shape in place. But you can also plan out what foam thicknesses each pattern should be to provide the necessary support. We'll get to that later in the build. As I had mentioned previously, I have limited space and materials, so I will be demonstrating a small section of my current Godzilla build using the patterning method. Let's get started, shall we? To begin, we want to grab a nice piece of reference for this build. For the new Godzilla cosplay in the works, I'm using the SH Monster Arts figure as it provides some accurate proportions to the on-screen suit. This figure needs to be patterned carefully, taking note of the high points, curves, and creases that define the surface of the design. These will then be divided into small separate parts that join together and form the shape. To do this, we carefully laminate the figure with masking tape, making sure we get into the creases that define the muscles. I like to use two layers to make sure the surface of the tape is smooth and durable enough. Covering one side of the figure will be just fine, as the large scale print will be flippable when transferring the patterns to foam. Next, we will be deciding where the dividing lines of the patterns are. As said before, we would want to place the divisions at the highest and lowest points of the surface. Be sure to add marks that identify where each area of the pattern needs to orient and join together. Once divided, these parts will be able to lay perfectly flat. Once you got all the necessary parts identified, you carefully cut them with an X-Acto or box cutting knife. Be sure not to damage the precious figure or um, your, your own fingers. Other cosplayer tutorials that teach armor patterning apply to kaiju suit fabrication. So if you need a more in-depth tutorial, be sure to check those out as well. Phew. Once the danger is out of the way, we lay the patterns on a cutting board or any flat surface with a ruler next to it. Next we hold still and take a nice orthographic view of the patterns. Any image orientation issues can be fixed on a photo editing program. Next step is to upload these photos onto a computer and convert them to vectors. They provide a clean result for your patterns and can be printed in a variety of scales without any loss of detail. These Godzilla patterns will be available on my Etsy store, so keep on the lookout on my social media. I like to use Inkscape for this process. It's a free program and easy to use. We trace the tape patterns with a thick outline and label them accordingly. Don't forget identifying those orientation marks. But wait, how big should this kaiju suit be anyway? Well, remember that ruler in the picture? Use that as a reference for scale. The average Godzilla suit is around 2 meters tall, or approximately 6.5 feet. 
This Monster Arts Godzilla figure is about 15.24 centimeters or 6 inches, which makes it a 1 12th scale figure. With that reference, trace a vector line on the ruler and make a uniform resize of all the patterns along with the line reference to the scale of your choice. Just be sure that Inkscape's digital ruler is set to metric or imperial, based on your own preference. Once you're all done, it's time to print. Once you have everything printed and cut out, it's time to select your foam thickness of choice and start transferring. Be mindful that the thickness of each pattern piece will determine the flexibility of the final foam structure. Use a good Sharpie to trace out the patterns. I like to use black but if you prefer a more subtle color, I recommend brown markers. Inside the shapes, use directional arrows to identify which patterns will be cut diagonally for creased or bevel edges. Creases should be cut outward, while bevels are inward cuts. With a box cutting knife, carefully cut along the edge of the sharpie line. Make sure your blade is sharp enough to reduce tension, and cut the foam like butter. To make the opposite side, simply flip the patterns and repeat the process. The gluing stage is the dirty work of this build. I must advise you to work in a well-ventilated area or outdoors with a respirator when using contact adhesives. These emit toxic fumes and can be incredibly nasty for your lungs. That being said, let's continue. I primarily use Foam Fast 74 spray adhesive. Spray lightly on both sides of the contacting foam. Let them dry enough to be tacky but not wet to the touch. Then gently join them together by following the orientation marks. Repeat these same steps until you have a fully glued foam body part. We now head to my favorite stage of the kaiju suit build, texture details. Depending on the Godzilla incarnation or kaiju design, there are two methods that you can utilize when creating detailed textures. One is additive detailing, where you cut and carve individual foam pieces and glue them to the foam surface. The other method is subtractive detailing, where you draw out the texture patterns on the foam surface and carve them out with scissors, tweezers, or razor blades. This requires some practice. If you carve or cut too deep into the foam, you may gouge out a hole on your surface. So test these methods on a separate foam sheet before applying it to the final build. All these techniques can also be combined to create much more dynamic shapes. Some special textures, like overlapping scales, fur, hair, or feathers, will require other materials and techniques. We're at the home stretch. 
Once you have all your textures done, it's time for the latex coating stage. I trimmed the excess of this pattern since we'll only be demonstrating this portion. You first need to prime the foam surface by coating it with a spray adhesive. You can use Foam Fast 74 for this, but that would waste some valuable adhesive. So we'll go for a cheaper 77 or multi-purpose spray. This primer will prevent the foam from absorbing any latex. After two coats, allow it to dry before proceeding to add talcum or baby powder. This prevents the surface from sticking to itself. To apply the latex in material, dab or brush lightly on the prime surface and allow it to dry between coats, increasing the amount used gradually. Keep in mind that Latex appears lighter in color, but dries darker. So don't worry if you're expecting a blood red, but see pinkish red. For interesting textures like skin, membranes, and webbing, you can use plain toilet paper and laminate it like paper mache for smoother details. Though if you want something stronger for wing membranes, for example, definitely use stretch fabric. A full kaiju suit will need about three to four coats for a strong and flexible result. Give it an hour or two and we're done. Well, for this piece anyway. Applying all these essential steps to the rest will result in a monster of a build. I hope this tutorial video serves as an inspiration and a guide for you to jumpstart your very own kaiju suit. Please send me your recommendations in the comments below or my social media pages on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Any feedback is enough. Interested in jumpstarting? There are Godzilla-inspired patterns available on my Etsy page. Be sure to keep an eye on new uploads and visit the store in the description below. If you wish to support me, I recently opened my Patreon page. Anything helps to ensure future tutorials and completion of my kaiju-related projects. If you have any current kaiju builds on the way or have any questions, hit me up on Instagram. Stay safe, happy building.